When writing computer programs, most application developers use a high-level programming language, such as Python or Java, which provide a lot of features for writing the logic of a program without worrying how the memory is managed. Below Python, we have C++, which is kinda high-level. I mean, it has objects and methods. But it also has pointers, which give you a lot more control over how the memory is managed. Below that is assembly, which is literally telling the processor how to process things. And then there are esoteric programming languages, which are just ridiculous. They may take the form of musical notes, or they might try to simplify everything down into eight commands that modify a single array. On my channel, I have made over 35 videos about these types of programming languages, but one of those videos was noticeably missing. Until today. That's right, we are finally entering the 8th circle of hell. I'm finally doing the frickin' Malbolge video. Honey, I'm home! <laughs> what was that? The laugh track! It's been here since we bought the house, Carl. <laughs> no, it hasn't! Yes, it has. Anyway, can you go to the basement and get me one more bucket of paint? Sure. And afterwards, I'll carve out my ears with an ice cream scoop. Okay, so yeah. Oh, great. God damn it! Either, dummy, what are you asking me for? Oh, hey, you're that troop of kid from Paper Mario. What are you doing here? Hey, that's Master Junior Troopa to you! Just doesn't matter, how'd you get here? Well, I just lost to that Mario guy in combat for the sixth time in a row, and then I kind of passed out a few minutes afterwards. Wow, I also passed out. But the way I passed out was way stupider. Wait a minute. Crocky, we both got here after some pretty bad trauma to the head. And judging by the looks of everything, Crocky, we're in hell! That's impossible, there's no laugh track here. In the 1990s, esoteric programming languages were starting to actually become a thing that people did. With the very notable exception of Intercal, SOLangs didn't really exist until 1993 when False, Befunge, and Brainfuck came onto the scene. In 1998, though, it came to the attention of someone named Ben Olmsted that none of these languages really existed with the sole intent of being difficult. Now you may be thinking, obviously these are meant to be difficult. I mean, just look at them. And to that I say, yeah, look at them, but closer. Intercal was meant to be different, Befunge was meant to be uncompilable, and brainfuck was meant to be small. And yeah, dealing with this is a major headache for obvious reasons, but that's just a result of the main goal leading to difficulty, not a result of the language being specifically designed to be difficult. So then, do we even want to know what a language designed to be difficult would look like? Yes, that's why you clicked on this video. Uh, I didn't click on anything. Also, isn't Carl supposed to be here? Yeah, but you didn't show up for the recording session. Anyway, Malbulge was developed in 1998 by Ben Olmsted and unleashed into the public domain. Malbulge was named after the eighth circle of hell in Dante's Inferno. That circle of hell is for practitioners of deception, fraud, and thievery. Since it's the eighth circle of hell, it's actually one of the worst. And Dante considers fraud to be worse than murder for some reason, since murderers go into the seventh circle. The ninth circle of hell is where traitors go, like Satan, Judas, and George Washington, maybe? So yeah, according to Dante, Washington is being punished worse than Hitler. And since Malbulge is where scammers go, Dante thinks that tech support scammers are worse than Hitler. He may not have thought this through very far. 
Malbolge the programming language, as described by Ben Olmsted, was designed to be difficult to use, and so it is. It is designed to be incomprehensible, and so it is. <sighs> Can't be that bad. Watch, I'm gonna write a Hello World program in Malbolge right now. Okay, so we start with... with... Most computers operate in a binary environment. The processor has a bunch of switches that can either be turned on or off. Those are represented as 1 and 0. And that's why computers think in binary. Malbolge, on the other hand, doesn't think in binary. Why? Because they did the unthinkable. They added a 2! <laughs> Malbolge operates on a simulated trinary computer, and instead of bits, it has trits. The memory, which is where the code is directly inserted because of course it is, is split into machine words consisting of 10 trits each, with a maximum value of 10 twos and a minimum value of 10 zeros. Malbolge also stores data in three registers, the accumulator, the code pointer, and the data pointer. These three things aren't that unusual, but manipulating them is... Not exactly trivial, to say the least. But the code and data pointers both increment on their own after each command. Where'd he go? Lazy slacker. Hold on! How are those all manipulated? I'm glad you asked, Creaturey, who is definitely going to be here in the final version of this video. Malbulge has eight possible commands that the program can do. V will stop the program. That's the easiest one, so turn back now. I will set the code pointer's location to whatever the data pointer is pointing at. That's how you will do control flow. J is similar, but it sets the data pointer's location to what the data pointer is pointing at. Slash, star, and P will all load data into the accumulator. Slash will load input from the standard input console. That's the most basic one, so again, turn back now. Star will take whatever is at D, rotate the trits to the right by one for no describable reason, and then set both the accumulator and the cell at D to that result. Oh, is that too complicated for you? Well, P is simpler. And by simpler, I of course mean it's way more ridiculous. Instead of just doing a simple rightward rotation, it takes every trit in both A and D, and evaluates them according to this nonsense table. The result of that is then stored into A and where D is pointing. This is called the crazy operation. I mean, it's not wrong. And by the way, Ben Olmsted didn't even call it the crazy operation. That's just the name that stuck. Oh, and before you start, like, trying to study this chart to find any rhyme or reason to what it's doing, don't look for pattern. It's not there. Less than symbol is a much simpler command that will print whatever is in A as an ASCII character provided you're actually able to figure out how to set A to anything useful. And finally, O does... NOTHING! It's a no-op. Oh, and by the way, you know those letters I've been referring to the commands as? Yeah, those are actually just fake opcodes, and the actual way to specify which command is which is by adding the code pointer to the data pointed to by the code pointer, and taking the remainder with respect to 94. And then seeing if it's one of these numbers. Because of course. Oh, and also, after running a command, whatever is at the code pointer is encrypted, according to this table. So as you can imagine, Malbold released with a staggering zero programs written for it. Where am I? Oh, you're in hell. Not even joking. Wait, what? Greetings, puny mortals. I am Obfuscate, and it seems that your mortality has finally caught up to you. Even if it was too soon. Yeah, yeah, what's our punishment? Oh, nothing. You'll eventually be obfuscated from this realm too, and never be seen again. But that won't happen until someone says your name out loud for the last time. So, maybe about three days, you insignificant munchkin. Yep, yeah, don't care. I'm escaping. 
Um, obfuscate. What's the likelihood of him succeeding? Zero. Anyway, you guys want to play cards with me to pass the time? No! I, I said I'm escaping! And, uh, how are you gonna do that? Well, each time there's a fork in the road, I'll go down the best path! Duh! Well, that sounds easier said than done. Yeah, he's an idiot. So, if Ben Olmsted never wrote a Malbolge program and the language is incomprehensible, how did anyone write any programs for this? I'm glad you asked. In 2000, the first Malbolge program was written. The author was Andrew Cook, who wrote the first program in Malbolge. You may have noticed that I put the words author and wrote in quotes here, but we'll come to that later. Cook first came up with a much nicer way to look at Malbolge programs. Normalized Malbolge. That's just like Malbolge, but instead of doing the whole C plus thing at C modulo 94 thing to get an opcode, you just use the corresponding symbol that I mentioned earlier, no matter what, and then run it through a translator to turn it from normalized Malbolge into encrypted Malbolge. Whenever I show Malbolge code in the video, I will normalize it so it is slightly less painful to kinda sorta maybe possibly understand. Anyway, Cook started writing his Malbolge Hello World program by not writing it at all and instead writing a search algorithm to find it for him. Yes, a Malbolge is that unusable that the first program ever written in Malbolge was done like that. Cook used a beam search algorithm. This algorithm makes a tree of possible program states and picks a given number of them to explore further. Picking which ones to search is based off of some function that takes the node of the tree as input. And in Cook's case, the function was 10 times the number of correct letters minus the number of times memory was accessed. After the program looked at almost 60,000 Malbolge programs, Cook finally had a Hello World program. Which doesn't give a crap about the correct casing, but it's readable. Here's the code. Yeah, you can't read that. So here's the normalized code. You can't read that either. Putting this into a debugger kinda sorta shows what it's doing. It flings the data pointer ahead and does a very specific sequence of crazy operations and right rotates, taking advantage of the fact that Malbolge repeats the ASCII table every 256 characters to get the specific letters used to print the phrase. This seems exactly like the kind of code that only a computer would write. But no matter, now it's my turn to write a Malbolge program. This program, for example, will take in one character and output it. Now, I'm going to generalize this into an infinite number of inputted characters by... What? It'll put... Okay, what the heck is going on? Hmm, it seems that if someone touches Melbourne's code, they disappear. Okay, new rule. None of you are allowed to touch the code. But I want to. No! Anyway, in 2004, Lou Sheffer wrote the first non-trivial Malbolge program that took in input, the cat program. A cat program is one that just prints whatever you input into it, like the cat function on Linux. Sheffer's attempt to program in Malbolge looked at it not as a programming language, but as a sort of encryption system that also produces output. Using this approach, he found a weakness. Jump doesn't self-modify, since the encryption happens after the jump occurs. Using this, he wrote a cat program. That actually can't be displayed normally due to containing non-printed symbols. Wait a sec, if it contains invisible symbols, is it even valid? It shouldn't be, but some Malbolge interpreters are okay with it. Well, I'm not okay with it. Well, that's fine, because Matthias Lutze came up with one that's actually visible. He used something pretty interesting to get around Malbolge's encryption system. Cycles. In Malbolge, the encryption system sometimes makes cycles. For example, J will encrypt to F, and F will encrypt back to J. If you find a context where F and J map up to an instruction, such as when J maps the instruction to move the data pointer when it's the 60th symbol in the code, and afterwards it becomes a no-op, it only needs to be run once more in order to become a move data pointer instruction again. Unfortunately, many of the cycles are much longer and much more complicated. The one used for I.O., for example, is nine characters long. But if this can somehow be looped over and over and over again without changing the accumulator, then we can get a cat program. And that's exactly what Luta did. It looks like this.
impossible to write code in Melbulge. Maybe all those guys that disappeared after touching the code can be rescued after all! Dude, don't risk it! But still, hope it's possible. Me too. Okay, I'm just gonna cut to the chase. You died and you're in hell. Now you're gonna react in shock! What? No. Yeah, and uh, we're trying to escape because we legitimately have nothing better to do. Hey, you, you could be playing cards with me, puny mortal! Yeah, no. Anyway, Junior Troop was trying to find a way out. Hey, uh, I found something. What is it? It looks like... Clippy? He's in shackles. Hey, Carl, remember when you took up necromancy as a hobby and revived that guy? Yeah, why are you looking at me like that? So that's how you ended up in hell instead of heaven, Carl. Actually, uh, reptiles go to hell automatically. Anyway, you better not unshackle him! Uh, what was that? What? No, you fucking idiot! I'm finished! Hello, I'm Clippet, your personal office assistant. It appears you're all trying to be the worst possible versions of yourselves. Do you need help? Trooper, what the heck did you do? I don't know, but Carl, look at you! You look ridiculous! What the? How the heck did this happen? It's because you're an idiot who deserves death, Carl. What? What? Yeah, Carl. The world is now a much better place without you in it. In fact, your family is hosting their Finally That Burden Is Gone party right now. Finally, I can marry someone decent. My old idiot husband, Carl, couldn't even figure out Malbulge Unshackled. Malbulge on what now?